How's it going everyone? David from DOD Media. A few years ago, I made a review of what was at the time the best bang for buck motorized camera slider out there, the GVM80QD. That review was extremely popular by my channel's average views in any case. And up until very recently, up until last year, it was still the slider that I would recommend to anyone wanting to dabble with motorized camera sliders without having to spend a fortune on a Rhino or Edelkrone system. Then last year, I reviewed the YC Onion Hot Dog 3 motorized slider, which for me ticked all the boxes that the GVM80QD did, but offered a lot more for a relatively small price increase. So since then, that has become the budget motorized camera slider that I've been recommending. And I don't know if it's in response to me having posted that video or not, um, but a few months ago, I mean, literally about a year ago, actually now, a um, couple of weeks after posting that video, I got an email from GVM saying they've got, you know, new sliders in the works and would I have a look at them? So I said, sure, send them over. And it's taken me about half a year to get this review done because reviewing yet another camera slider system was very far down on my list of priorities for this channel and also just in general work coming in and trying to focus on the things that I enjoyed doing on this channel, it just wasn't up there. However, having used this slider around the studio as well as on commercial work over the last few months, I do feel it's high time that I give GVM that review that they requested. So this is my review of this new silent all app controlled version of the GVM motorized slider. It comes in two sizes, 31 inches and 48 inches. Now, personally, the 48 inch is more than I need. And mostly I find myself reaching for the 31 inch out of like convenience, but I have used the 48 for B cam on interviews and having that extra range, it's been pretty sweet. Now, like the GVM 80 QD and the YC Onion Hot Dog, these sliders operate on a 2D basis, meaning that it can move back and forth along the track and it can rotate the caddy using a rotation rod, which can be adjusted to track or pan to varying degrees. Now, what's different with these models is that there's no longer a control unit. This relies entirely on Bluetooth, which I hate. I hate not having the option to use this without a phone. I hate that there are no controls whatsoever on the unit itself, but maybe you don't. So I'll, I'll try and keep my own dislikes aside so that this remains as objective as possible. The app itself is a little bit clunky, but it has no problems finding and connecting to the units, both on iOS and on Android. Now with all of these budget sliders, you'll need to calibrate it yourself. Uh, you can't just turn it on and start sliding. You need to set your in points and your out points. Otherwise your caddy is just going to keep kind of hitting against there and the stepping motor is just going to make that horrible, horrible sound. But once you've told the motor how many revs in either direction it can travel, you're good to go. I like that the battery sits on top rather than on the side or underneath. I have had issues with other devices, not just sliders, uh, where the battery sits upside down and the loading mechanism is just poorly designed and your battery ends up falling out and smashing on the floor. I've lost two batteries that way. It's not good. Or if you're using one of these NPF style monsters, that's just, which one is this? This is the, the NPF 970 plus. Basically it just gets the skyscraper. Well, because it's so tall, it protrudes and can end up blocking, which is what happens with the YC onion slider because that sits underneath the moving caddy. Uh, so at least here, you don't have to worry about that. And you can also power these with DC power at nine volts, but it doesn't come with a pay with a pay. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't come with a power cable. So you need to find a transformer and the correct barrel size to actually power it. Now, the bit that actually impressed me the most about these sliders is the noise or lack thereof. The previous GVM was quiet. I mean, like really, really quiet. One of the most common questions on that original review was, how noisy is it? And the reason for those questions was that like here, I was shooting the review with a shotgun mic pointing straight down. So picking up my voice and anything below it. And the slider like here was on a wooden table uh, rather than mounted on a tripod or light stands. So you really got a lot more noise than you'd usually get in a normal operation. So to counteract that now, I've put these feet on some of these little um, lens cleaning cloths to try and dampen any kind of vibration from the motor going through to the desk, which is then making that kind of audible. So 
this should be pretty quiet. And honestly, this thing even at max speed is extremely quiet. It's got a decent ramp up and ramp down or ease in and ease out, though you can't adjust the actual duration of that. Um, but it is much better than the YC Onion 3s. Unlike the YC Onion 3, however, Hot Dog 3, um, you can't do a memory recall with this. So just like the original GVM, if you power it off, you need to recalibrate it before you can use it again. But to be honest, that really doesn't bug me because I've had instances with the YC Onion where I've powered it off, the caddies move slightly, and then I've done a power recall, power recall, memory recall. And so the in and out points have shifted like beyond the reach of the slider. So it's kind of a, it's a useless thing if it moves even the tiniest bit. But anyway, enough chit chat. So to operate the pan track rod, it's pretty simple. And I'd suggest adjusting that before you power up the motor because you'll save yourself a ton of time. So here's how I do it. Bring your camera to the center and then frame however you would like to frame. I'm just gonna hit record here. Then bring your camera to either extreme and adjust your track rods. So you loosen them on both sides and you can either push them left down, right up to get it to track or left up, right down to get it to pan. So I want it to track because I don't really understand why you would want to do that massive pan. You ever seen a pan at 24p? Hurt your face it will. Right, so that's pretty good on that side. So I'm gonna lock that down. Lock that one loosely. Bring it all the way back. You see it does a nice track all along. And actually, yeah, that's pretty good. So I'm gonna tighten that one there as well. Then I'm actually gonna leave it over this end because if I power it up, it means I don't have to travel the extra way. So then I'm going to power on the slider. You'll hear it go and this will tighten up and now you cannot move that. Once the slider is powered on, connect to the app. Connect, lovely stuff. And this is what you see on iOS. It's basically the same on Android. So I don't just wanna be doing manual sliding. I wanna be setting it to be going back and forth indefinitely until that battery dies. So we are first of all going to set our points. So I will set my A point, then I will move all the way to the other side. Set my B point. And there we go. Then I will adjust my speed. I'll bring it down to maybe, actually I'll, I'll go 100% just for now. Auto loop, and then we select which one is our starting point, which one is our ending point from the two that we set. Set the number of loops. I'm just gonna go 999. Look at me. There you go. Okay, execution. Now it's gonna go back to the starting point and it's just gonna run through. This is max speed. You see that ease and out? Much, much smoother than the YC onions. It would be great if you could like adjust just how aggressive that smooth in, smooth out, ease in, ease out is, or how relaxed it is. Like from like here, it starts to ease out, like from 25% of your move, it starts to ease out, but you can't. I feel like there'd be an easy thing to add, but but they just don't have that. So now I can pause it. Cool. But I'm kind of locked within this menu. So if I want to change anything like, you know, the speed, then I have to exit that, change the speed, bring it down to 53%, go back into auto loop. Those things remain selected, so that's good. But you still have to then re-enter the number of loops. So it's a bit finickety but it's not too bad. Okay, back to the starting point. All right, and now we're at 53% speed. Can you hear that? Probably not. And that is like, you know, right underneath a shotgun mic on a wooden table. It's got these little felt pads and that's it. I mean, if you have this on a tripod, it will be utterly silent promise you. Now, one of the things that they have changed since the original GVM, one of the things that I took issue with was that 
The original one ran along this track rod with basically two bits lined with felt. So as the track rod, track rod, what? Track rod would get to a certain extension, it would start pushing it, which was crap because it meant that there was a bit of give. So you would start your slide and it wouldn't start actually tracking until it met resistance. Whereas now it has two wheels that are constantly connected to the rod, which means that as soon as it starts moving, it will start actually rotating, which means that now the moves are actually properly repeatable. Okay, and then let's just exit that and set it down to 1% just to show you how bloody slow this thing is. So if you're doing some macro work, stick a probe lens on there. It's going to work pretty well. It obviously also comes with a time-lapse mode and it has the ports and comes with oodles of cables for you to plug your camera in. But I, I don't like using sliders as intervalometers. I just, I think that's, I just, it never works. Never works for me. But if you're into time-lapse, then, you know, you can, you can figure that one out. But I've never had luck um, figuring out the time-lapse feature on any app for any slider, even the fancy ones like Rhino. Just never works the way you think that it should work. Now, the reason that I adjusted the pan track rods before powering on the slider is just that it's so much faster than doing it once the motors are actually powered up and you can't manually slide anymore. So with all that in mind, would I promote this slider over the Hot Dog 3 by YC Onion as my new budget recommendation for a motorized slider? For me and my uses, yes. I can't stand that there's no way of using this without a phone. That ties the ability uh, to use this directly with the company's survival. If the company goes bust or the app goes down, so does the slider. But overall, it is more quiet, less clunky, and the biggest issue with the YC Onion being the ease in and out, um, being too aggressive for my liking, that's not the case here anymore. This won't jiggle your camera uh, when it reaches the end of your slide, like the YC Onion does, and it definitely does. Um, and that's, that's really important if you're shooting an interview and you wanna stay on that shot, despite the slider reaching the end of its run, you wanna still show that person without the visuals distracting the viewer. And if your camera gets to the end and goes and then comes back, that's gonna distract the viewer or you're just gonna to have to cut away to a different shot that you don't necessarily want to do. So the app survival and upkeep is a gamble I'm willing to run based on how much I enjoy actually using this over the YC Onion. There are links in the description for both slider lengths. However, since I definitely don't need two of these, I'm gonna give away the 31 inch version, this one, uh, to one of you. Here's what you need to do. Leave a comment down below telling me why you think you should get the slider and how you plan to use it. And also give me a follow on Instagram and Twitter, I'm trying to build those up. I'm not actually gonna check uh, whether you're following me, but it's the decent thing to do if you're wanting to enter the draw. I'll pick a random winner one month after this video goes live. You'll only have to pay for shipping fees and it's yours. All right, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.